love and your mercy and your grace. And Lord, I'm asking you this morning, to God, just continue to move upon your people. Touch each and every one, dear Lord. We love you, we honor you this morning, to God. Lord, there's no other name other than the name of Jesus. Lord, we worship you. Oh, 
Christ will rise. Oh, yes, 
at the midnight cry when our Jesus comes again. that walk wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at the side and ten thousands at the right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. Therefore shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. 
For he shall give his angels charge over thee, and to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in thy hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, and the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on the high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, he shall call for me, and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I set, satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now if you would, turn with me if you would into 2 Samuel chapter 5. Now I want to read two, three verses. 2 Samuel, just go back a, a few a chapter, a few books. 2 Samuel chapter 5. And I want to read verses 17 through 19. The Bible says in 2 Samuel 5, 17. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came upon to seek David. And David heard of it and went down to the hole. And the Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephidim. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Will thou deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will. Thou hast delivered the Philistines into thy hand. Heavenly Father, I come this morning in the name of Jesus. I thank you again. I thank you again, dear Lord, for who you are. I thank you again, dear Lord, for your love and your mercy and your grace. And if it wasn't for you, dear Lord, what would we have and where would we be today? And I give you all honor and I give you all praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen. And amen. I want to talk to you this morning just for a few moments on the secret place. There's a secret place. The secret place will become the sacred place. The sacred place will become the desired place. And when that happens, you will not only experience protection but once also an anointing of power. Amen. Amen. There is a secret place this day, church, that you and I need to get to. Amen. Amen. And there is power. I want to bring your attention back to verse 17 in the book of 2 Samuel when he said there in the 17th verse, he said, but when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David, king over Israel, all the Philistines came to seek David and heard of it and went down to the hole. David was anointed. David was anointed to be king over Israel. The Bible says that the Philistines came out against David. But notice something this morning. The Philistines were notified of David's new, new level anointing. Come on. Yeah. They were. They heard that David had a new level of anointing. Yeah. Satan, church, listen to me this morning. Satan has little <coughs> concern until he hears, uh, hears of the anointing. Yeah. Nothing will break his yoke except the anointing. Yeah. When the devil hears that God has given you a new level of anointing, yeah. the devil don't like it. I said the devil don't like it. And they came out to, to challenge him. And when David was anointed, his problems didn't go away. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. The anointing is not a problem exemption power. I want you to get that this morning. The anointing is power to confront problems. Come on, church. The fact of the matter is that when David was anointed, his problems got bigger. Yeah. Oh, hello. Yeah. Is anybody in the house this morning? Yeah. When David was anointed with a fresh anointing, and when David was anointed with a third level anointing, the problems multiplied. Yeah. Yeah. Now, don't let, me, don't let that discourage you. Yeah. Right. Some people are like, hey, Hey, if my problems are going to get worse, I don't even want a greater anointing. Come on. 
And the more problems and the more problems, Brother Jim, are going to come up on me. I don't want that anointing. Listen to me, church. Today, if you're going to make it, you need the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You need to get into a secret place where God can only protect you. And with His anointing, He will help you get through it. So many people say, I don't want the anointing, but it's going to cause me problems. I'll take all of it. Amen. Amen. No. The way you should look at it is at this. Is when the problems, the bigger the problems come, you are anointed with a bigger than anointing. Yes. Come on, a greater than anointing. Yes. Because it is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That is divine, supernatural, amen, equipment for everything. The anointing is not for shouting. The anointing is not for dancing. The anointing is not for the goosebumps. Oh, don't mistake what I'm saying. I'm just saying that the anointing is placed and calm and relaxed. Meaning on the contrary, I believe everything, everywhere the anointing shows up, there will be activity. Yeah. When the anointing of the Holy Ghost shows up, something's going to happen. Yeah. We've got to get into that secret place. The God's anointing will fall upon us. Yes. I'm just saying this morning, the anointing is far more than just emotionalism. Yes, this is true. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is a supernatural equipment to destroy the works of the devil. Because the Bible said, as Isaiah says, the anointing is the burden of Removing yoke, destroying, destroying power of God. Yeah. Isaiah 10, 27 says, And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from all thy shoulder and his yoke from all thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Yeah. We need the anointing yeah. today. I said we need the anointing today. I was asked this week, what is your vision for the church? And I said, I don't want to see the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost start moving in the church like we've never seen it before. Yes, I believe that we should expect. We got it up on the board. We should expect every time we gather together that yokes will be destroyed. Bodies will be broken. Yes. And bodies will be healed. And that is exactly what will happen if the Holy Ghost has His way. Amen. Amen. Yes. I could be wrong, but I believe our level of expectation for the supernatural working power of God, power and glory of power of God is far too low today. Yes, this is true. Come on, church, it ought to be up here. Yeah. Higher than anything. Church, come on. At the very least, even if we aren't, even if there are any sick that need to be healed, we should be experiencing the fire of the presence that shifts and elevates us to a new level of the Holy Ghost and presence every time that we meet in this church. Yes, we ought to come expecting for a higher power. For something great to happen. Amen. We should be experiencing fresh baptisms of the Holy Ghost. And fire. Every time we meet. There should be such a hunger. And thirst. And craving for the glory of God. That we will not be satisfied with anything less. Than the tangible manifest presence of an almighty God. The, the indisputable truth is you will only get what you are willing to reach for. Amen. Hear me. And it follows. If you can live without it, you can live without it. If you can live without it, you will live without it. Huh? Hunger is the magnet that draws the presence of God. Hunger is the thermometer. God uses to check our spiritual temperature. Hello. Yes. Our hunger is a prophecy. Remember, they that hunger and thirst shall be filled. Hello, when you come to God's house, you want to have a, such a hunger, you want to have such a thirst that you want to be filled with God's anointing higher and stronger than you ever have. 
when we get to that secret place that God wants us to be, He'll give us a new level of an anointing. And if, since hunger is the rule God uses to pour His Spirit out, we should be asking God to increase our hunger Amen. and increase our desire. Yes. Huh? I don't know about you. I want more of Him. Yes, amen. I want more of Him. Amen. I want more of what God has. Yes. God is blessing. I said God is blessing you yes. in different ways that I'm not an object, object or a shit I am not allowed to say. But I know God's got more. Yes. Amen. And I want more of Him. Yes. It is in His presence that we are anointed with His power. And if there ever was a time when we needed the power of God, church, it's right now. Amen. When David received the third level anointing, he immediately showed up on the devil's radar screen. Huh? Come on. We don't want to get up on the devil's radar screen. We don't even want the anointing. Come on, church. Because if we can be anointed, we know something's going to happen. We know the devil's going to attack us. He's going to come at you with all force. Amen. Because when you get that new anointing, you show up on the devil's radar. Amen. He knows, come on, not to mess with you and I. Because the anointing and the power of the Lord. Why? Well, because I'm in a secret place where the devil can't touch. That's so you can't touch me. Amen. Come on, church. When you get in that secret place, he is your refuge. He is your high tower. He is your God. King of kings and the Lord of lords. When we get into that, that anointing, Brother Randy, amen, we show up upon the radar of the devil. And he don't like it. Huh? He don't like it. But that's all right. Yes. That's all right. I don't care what he don't like. <laughs> huh? Amen. Come on, church. Amen. He showed up as a threat. David showed up as a threat to the devil. Yes. Until you are anointed. You don't really even show up on the devil's radar screen. This is true. You are no threat to hell. Church, it is the anointing that makes you dangerous to hell. Yes. It is the anointing that gives the devil nightmares. It is the anointing, the anointing is visible in the spiritual realm. Yes. Remember, the devil recognized. The anointing. Because the anointing is the same power that kicked him out of hell, heaven. No. Everything Jesus did, every miracle, every healing, every deliverance was by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Remember this verse. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Ghost, and with power. Amen. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with yeah. him. Yeah. Oh, come on, church. Yeah. I believe today that every believer, every born-again child of God, yeah. every blood war spirit-filled Christian yeah. should be asking and should be actively seeking and passionately pursuing, pursuing a new level of anointing yes. every day. Amen. When you wake up, your feet hit the floor. You ought to be saying, Lord, this is a day that you have made. I'm going to rejoice in it. I don't know what today to hope, but I need a new refreshing of your anointing to get me through the day. I can't make it without his anointing. Amen. You can't make it. And I can't make it without his anointing. Why should we ask? Because we need it. Amen. Hello? Amen. 
Because we are, all, we are already fighting on a new level. We are fighting higher level devils today. You may not understand it, but the truth is there are different ranks. There are different levels of demons in the kingdom of darkness. And we are definitely fighting higher level devils today than in the past. Nonchalant, haphazard, half-hearted, lukewarm relationship with God is not going to cut it anymore. No, no, amen. I'm convinced that if we don't learn the secret of living from, from the secret place, we are not going to make it. Amen. Amen. We got to get into that place and let the anointing of the Holy Ghost move upon us. Teach us. Come on, Lord. Teach me today. That's my prayer every day. Lord, teach me. I don't know it all. And I need your anointing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 91 is a covenant of blessings. If we read it, and promises that are only between God and those who live in. And from the secret place. Amen. Huh? It's not for everyone. No. Amen. Can't be for everyone. Yes. But it's only those who will get into that secret place. Yeah. Huh? Yes. You can't claim Psalms 91 unless you are living in Psalms 91. Amen. That's right. From the secret place we become the anointed of the Lord. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is standard is standard operating equipment for the child of God. Church, the anointing is not just a feeling of wonderful presence of the Lord. Though we are thankful for His presence. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for His presence. The anointing is different. The anointing is a warfare. What do you mean? The anointing, the anointing is forecasting out devils. The anointing is the healing of the sick. The anointing is for the delivering the bound and the oppressed. The anointing is for setting captives free. The anointing is for breakthrough. Amen? Yes, amen. We need a breakthrough. Yes. And I believe we're headed through that way right now. Yes, amen. Come on, yeah, church. We're headed for a breakthrough. Yes. And it breaks our hearts yes. that we can't, that other people, others will not jump aboard upon this, what God has. Yes. But that's all right. If they don't want the blessings, I'll take all the blessings that God has for me. Come on, I'm going to go along for the Lord. Amen, no matter what. Best example is when David played his harp and evil spirits left Saul. Amen. Read your word. Amen, the secret place is not a hideout where we run to get away from the enemy. Come on. Yes, the secret place is a place of safety for those who dwell there, but the secret place is much more than that. Yes. The secret place becomes the sacred place. The sacred place becomes the most desired place. And that secret, sacred, desired place is where you call to be a personal, intimate relationship with the Lord Himself. When you get into that secret place, and you will be in relationship with Him. Jesus said, what did Jesus say? He said, enter into thy closet and shut the door. Yeah. Then pray to your Father in secret. Yeah. Then he said, the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. Look around today. We are being blessed by God. Why? Because somebody got into the closet and prayed and seek God's face. And God has opened, reward us openly. Amen. Oh, come on. Somebody take that this morning. The anointing of your life is a reward of dwelling in the secret place. Go back to Psalms 91 for David. First, David talks about the safety. He talks about the protection for those secret place dwellers. Then in verse 13, it shifts from safety and protection to authority and power. There is an anointing for protection. And then there is an anointing for demonstration. Hello. For manifesting the power of God over the works of the devil. Amen. 
I gotta read it again. Verse 90, chapter 91 of Psalms, verse 13 says, For thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, and the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Oh, don't thou sound a, a quite a bit alike what Jesus said? He said in Luke 10 and 19, Behold, I give unto you, give thee power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over the powers of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. A lot of people say, well, Jesus was not mentioned in the Old Testament. I beg you wrong. Yes. He from the beginning. In the yes. beginning was God. Come on. Yes. Amen. He was there with God in the yes. beginning. And He's still there. And He came to this earth and went to the cross for you and I that we can go to that secret place and be with the Lord. That power is the anointing. Then that anointing can only be found in the secret place. Without the anointing, you are dead in the water. Amen. Amen. Without the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you are, you are an invitation to disaster. <coughs> the anointing of the Holy Ghost is the key to the abundant life. Yes, David writes in Psalms 23 and 5, Thou anointest my cup, my head with oil, and my cup one runneth over. The anointing is the key to the effective life. Yes. Huh? Yes. Zechariah writes in 4 and 6, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Yes. Now, I want to draw your attention to something very powerful this morning. What did David do when he received his third level anointing? Huh? And he heard that the Philistines were come out against him. What did David do? Did he do like most Christians run? Yeah. And hide? No, the Bible says in 2 Samuel 5 to 7, and when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came up to seek David. And David heard of it and went down to the hole. That word hole means stronghold, fortress, defense. Then in verse 19 says, And David inquired of the Lord, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will thou deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, For, for will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thy hand. In other words, church, you can't be delivered, you can't be set free, you can't do anything unless you got the anointing. And when David got the anointing, he said, Lord, can I go up? And the Lord said, Go, you will defeat us because I've given you the anointing. You can't do it unless we get to that secret place. We gotta get to that secret place in God. Let Him be our refuge. Come on, church. Get self out of the way. Amen. Get self out of the way and let God be God. Yes. Oh, your pastor's learning. I'm learning. Am I there yet? No. I'd be a liar if I said if I said I'm there. But I'm learning to get self out of the way and let the anointing, Brother Gilbert, let the power of God. Move and manifest upon the church and upon my life. Yes, thank you. I can't make it without the anointing. Yeah. Are you hearing me this morning? Yeah. You can't make it, church, without the anointing. We need the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Lord, shall I go up against the Philistines? Will thou deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said, David, go up. <laughs> Lord, do you want us to be in Dunkirk? He said, go up. Yeah. Go up! I got a work for you, son. I got a work for this church. I got a work for this community. I got a work to do. Because I'm giving you the anointing of the Holy Ghost because you've been in the secret place. Come on, church, we got to get there. The hold is just another way of saying the secret place. Yes. That's what the hold represents. It's the place where you get everything you need. Huh? Come on. 
Brother Randy sang it beautifully. Amen. You can't find your, your answers in a, a brown bottle. Right. Huh? I've been there and tried that. You can't find your, your you can't find your answers in, in drugs. Come on. You can't do it. But when you get into the secret place and you allow the anointing, why? Because he had a mama and a daddy that prayed for him. I had a mama and a daddy that prayed for me. Amen. I thank God there was two praying warriors plus more in Bay Little, Ohio, a little town just uh, uh, east of here. There were some praying women in there that loved the Lord and knew how to get a hold of God. Why? Because they were in the secret place and they had the anointing and they came upon them to preach and talk about Jesus Christ. We need the anointing. We need that secret place. It's a place where you get instructions. And it's a place where you get directions. Huh? It means getting along with God. Huh? It means I recognize that I need divine instructions. And I need divine assistance. Huh? It is the secret place of the Most High. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. Oh, come on, church. Yes. Grab a hold of this this morning. David knew his success was not just in being anointed. He knew it was a personal fellowship a communion with the Lord himself. Huh? When God anoints you, I cannot give you no anointing. Don't ask me for any anointing. Only thing I can give you is 11 B. <laughs> but I know who can give you the anointing. Huh? And that anointing will give you instructions. When you get in that secret place, come on, church. Amen. Amen. David knew his success was not being anointed. He knew it was a personal fellowship and communion with the Lord Himself. Yes. Lord, what do you want me to do today? Yes. Huh? Yes. Instead of, this is what I want to do. Yes. Lord, what do you want me to do? Exactly. Too many believers count too much on themselves. Yes, David knew he was anointed. i got, I got to hurry. But he also knew he had to stay connected to the source. Yes. Huh? That's right. I see so many people in the church today who are foolishly leaning on their anointing alone. In other words, they don't think they need to come to church to study the Bible study. They are deceiving themselves into believing that they are okay. Because they can feel His presence or because they spoke in tongues six months ago or a year ago. Hello. I love you. And that's why I'm going to say this. If you think that you can miss church four times out of five and don't pay your tithes and you don't think Bible study is necessary and you're not seeking God then you're spending, and you're not spending time in the presence or loving and worshiping Him in the secret place, but you're okay, you're lying to yourself. You're self-deceived. And I believe you're in a very dangerous spiritual condition. Amen. You want to know what scares me? Yes. It's this. That we are living in the darkest, most treacherous, most evil times of our entire lives. Amen. Right now. And multitudes of church folk acting like nothing is happening and carrying on as usual. Yes. That scares me. Yes. Amen. That scares me. Yes. That people think, I don't have to do this. If you are not aggressively, passionately pressing forward, then the fact is you are passively backsliding. Amen. Yes. David went down into the hole. As we read it. Now say it like this. David got a hold of God. Yes. 
Amen. Amen. David knew he could not rest on past victories. Come on, church. Or past accomplishments. Or past experiences with God. Those experiences were great. Yeah. Those were for a time. But I need a new level of anointing today. Thank you. Here. Church, David knew he needed the fresh fire of God burning in his life. I'm telling, church, I'm telling you today, I don't care how great your past accomplishments or experiences have been or how anointed you were at one time. You need a new fresh fire. Yes. You need to get down into that hold and get a hold of God until God gets a hold of you. You need to cry out to God for a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost with fire. Not just in times of trouble, but every day. Amen? Amen. What God is trying to lead us into is the revelation of not only having a secret place experience every day, but of living from the secret place. But of living from the secret place. When David came out of that hole, he had divine instructions, yes. Yes. divine presence, yes. and divine power. Amen. And the Bible says, and David came to Baal Perazim, and David smoked them there, and said, the Lord hath broken forth upon my enemies before me as the breach of water. That's the purpose for the anointing, Amen. to smite the enemy, yes. to undo the works of, dark, of darkness. 1 John 3 and 8 says, For this purpose of the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Church, that is why we must get back to the hold, yes. which is a type of secret place. Not just as a refuge from the storm or a hideout, but the place where we are refreshed yes. and we are revived. Yes. The place where we receive fresh fire and where God downloads orders from headquarters. <laughs> and the place where we are clothed with the anointing. Yeah. And most importantly, the place we live. Someone, someone once said, he, would, he who would be much for God must be much with God. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. God today is looking for vessels that he can pour his anointing, a higher anointing upon. And I look around this morning, I see vessels in here this morning that God will support his anointing upon you. Amen? Amen. He wants to take you to a higher level yes. than you are now. Amen. He wants you to experience greater things than he has for you. Yes. Come on, church. We fully scratched the surface of what God wants to do for this church. Come on. I've been saying it for a long time. Even in over the uh, nursing home here a while back, Brother John looked at me and said, Pastor, i got to tell you something. He said, you've been talking about it for a long time. And finally I said, I think he blows smoke. I don't think he knows what he's talking about. Then all of a sudden God opens up a church. Amen. He blesses us. Our church with everything that you've been talking about. Come on, church. Is this permanent? I don't know. But I know I want to be in his will and do what he wants. I believe he's got something even greater yes. than this ahead for us. If we'll get into that secret place. Yes. I believe that. I believe this is just a... Come on. We had to appreciate what we had. Yeah. And many times I told God, God, there's problems here, but I thank you for what we had in Philly. Yeah. Yeah. It was for a time and for a season. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I battled every winter with the heat. I battled every summer with the air conditioning. But right now, I don't know about you, I'm burning up. And I know it's cold outside. 
Huh? I came over here at 8 30, crept up the heat to 72. And it gets warm in here quick. I had somebody tell me the other day, we got the ceiling fans on because I'm smart. <laughs> I want to keep the heat down here where we at. Yeah. Uh, I don't wanna, I'm not going to go up on a ladder and stay up there. I want the heat to come down. Yeah. Huh? Are you hearing me this morning? Why? Because we got to get into that secret place. Amen. Come on. Yes. Come on. Right. There's somebody sitting here this morning who wrote something on the back of a tie envelope. So I'm going to give God honor where honor's due. And that person said, I thank you, you pastor and sister Angela, for preaching the cross. Amen. Yes, amen. That's what it's all about. Yes. It's not about me. No. It's not about you. No. It's not Jesus. Yes, amen. And when we get to that secret place that he paid a great price for you and I, redemption church, we will get the anointing for God greater than we ever have before. I'm not going to change our message. We're going to preach Christ to Him crucified. And they're going to come and they're going to hear messages. They're going to hear preaching like they've never heard before. But it's going to be the truth. We're not going to have no show, uh, side show or anything like that. But we want the, the, when they come in, they feel the anointing. They feel the presence of God. Amen? And it's all because we got to that secret place. Yes, thank you. Jesus. He's my secret place. Yes. You gotta get there, church. Yes. You gotta get there. Oh, no, 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 no. You gotta get to that secret place. Amen. He would be he who would be much for God must be much with God. Amen. 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 God right now is downloading. Orders from headquarters. Huh? He's got orders for you and I to do. But we need that anointing. Are you hearing me this morning? We gotta get to that secret place in the Lord before we can make it. You can't make it without that secret place. Are you hearing me this morning? We gotta get into that secret place. God is downloading. Come on, church. Yes. I said he's downloading, yes. downloading orders right now from headquarters. Yes. And it's for you and I. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I'm not, I'm not happy where I'm at. What do you mean? In the building or Dunkirk or what? No, I'm not talking about that. My walk with the Lord. Amen. I want more of God. Yes, thank you. I want more because I know He's got more for me. And that the, the prophecy as I gave to you this morning is he that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. When you get a hunger and a thirst after more of God's anointing, he'll fill you. Yes. I said he'll fill you. Yes. You can't get it at, at the Rite Aid pharmacy. You can't get it at Walmart pharmacy. You can't get it anywhere else. But I know a place. And it's called the hole, the secret place Amen. where you and I can get. And God will move upon you. Yes. And God will anoint you. Yes. Amen. Yes. How many this morning, by lifting up your head, come on, lifting up your head and say, I want a pressure anointing. I want a new level anointing. Come on, church. Amen. And God will give it to you yes, if, you'll, if you'll ask for it. Amen. You've got to ask Him. Yes. Don't ask your pastor. Don't ask nobody in the church for the anointing. No. We can't give it to you. Yes, no. But God can. Amen. And when we get to that secret place, come on. Yes. God will yes. move. Thank you, God will move.